My name is Cédric Philibert. I'm an energy and climate analyst. I've been working 20 years with the International Energy Agency, and I'm now an associate researcher with IFRI, the French Institute for International Relations. Soon after the war began in uh, Ukraine, I started thinking about our dependency on Russian hydrocarbons and some calls were made for an embargo on gas. Uh, but I thought we have to look beyond gas. And this is why I wrote this note um, with the idea that I could add a little bit to the discussion. Our dependency on gas is not easy to break. Uh, for some countries, some European countries, it goes up to 100%, uh, Bulgaria and Finland. For Germany, it's uh, more than 50%. And it's not very easy to to reduce in, in a glimpse because the dependency, because the the, the um, gas is imported through pipelines or with ships as liquefied uh, gas. But to receive the uh, gas from ships, you need to have uh, regasification infrastructures. And for example, Germany has none. So it's, it's really difficult because you cannot build a pipeline in weeks or months. Um, at the same time, the oil is, is a much bigger problem for Russia. Uh, for us, it's easier to get rid of oil for several reasons. Uh, first, because uh, we have the uh, strategic reserves. All IEA member countries have three months imports uh, reserves of oil. And uh, also because oil is much more fungible. Uh, it goes in, in ships that are much more uh, ordinary and, and so you can get to other suppliers much more easily than with gas but on top of that if you if you look at the price for russia uh, of course uh, an embargo on oil or even a reduction on, of, on oil consumption is much better is much more painful for russia than on gas because the revenues from exports um, of oil are much bigger than the revenues for exporting gas in Russia. In 2019, these revenues on oil were seven times the revenues on gas. Another thing I thought was that an embargo is difficult, but if you don't reduce the consumption, well, then the embargo will create a, a, a further rise in prices. And this rise in prices will make it more difficult for us and less difficult for Russia. Uh, to the opposite, if we reduce our consumptions, then we can really reduce uh, our buying of uh, Russian oil and gas uh, because the prices, including the international prices, will go down if the consumption is reduced. And this will ease the task for us and make it a double pain for Russia. So it's important that we start by reducing our consumption. We can do a number of things, um, such as reducing a little bit the temperature in, in, in our homes and buildings. But now the winter is almost over, though it was relevant uh, in, in February. It's much less relevant now. Uh, we can shift our electricity consumption from peak hours to off-peak hours because it's during the peak hours that uh, our electric uh, utilities need to uh, consume to burn some gas in uh, thermal power plants uh, to respond to the uh, demand. So just moving electricity consumption from early evening to the second part of the night can have a significant effect on our gas consumption. Of course, over the... Uh, uh, the months, because the big problem now for gas is the next winter, we can do also a number of other things. We can roll out more quickly um, heat pumps. We can uh, insulate the uh, least efficient uh, homes and buildings. We can uh, speed up the uh, deployment of solar and wind and reduce our consumption of gas. Now, if we broaden the scope to oil, there are a number of other things we can do that are uh, even easier. We can just reduce our speed on highways because this is a big lever to reducing consumption. We can uh, reinstall um, 
teleworking, which we have done and learned how to do during the, the pandemics. And it's a powerful means to reduce oil consumption. We can ask uh, companies to uh, the employers to organize a car sharing, car pooling uh, of employees, etc. And it's better to 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 do a lot on all hydrocarbons and to do much more on just one. It, it's easier and it uh, creates more uh, stronger economic sanction for for Russia. That was uh, the main theme of uh, this uh, note, and I think it has finally been echoed by a recent decision. At the very beginning, I was very disappointed by the first meetings of heads of states and government in EU. They did not call citizens to act. They just said, oh, we're going to do this and that, but they never called citizens to play their part, to to act voluntarily to reduce their consumption immediately with some simple means and uh, uh, it was it was odd to me that they didn't do not do that uh, so my, my note was an attempt to tell citizens that they could act and it was to tell governments that they should ask citizens to do their part citizens and and firms uh, to to act and i was convinced of course some of these actions will have some little inconvenience, like you have to wear a sweater if you reduce your uh, home temperature by one or two degrees. Uh, but that's so little compared to the suffering of the uh, Ukrainian people that I was convinced um, that these actions, which also help us save money, help reduce our dependency, uh, help Ukraine, and finally also help the planet, because going to another supplier does not do much to 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 reduce also carbon emissions but uh, reducing our consumption and learn how to be a little more um, clever in the way we use energy also has uh, long-standing consequences for for the planet so you would do all all of this uh, in one thing and i'm sure people will be willing to do it and very recently we we've started to see uh, uh, people, uh, governments or international institutions like the IEA uh, and the European Commission together uh, asking citizens to play their part and, and, and I hope maybe I contributed a little bit with this, uh, with this note to, to this move. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.